I just want to take the time and say thank you. I will start posting new content very soon. There will be more reviews, of course, but there will also be other things. So stay tuned for those. Again, thank you all for subscribing to this channel. I don't know if the battle is over. Whether it is or not, I believe this is the best fight of the year. Among the best within the series, it's a great example on how to utilize a powerful foe versus a group of heroes who are weaker in compare, but will find their way to victory. Long have I feel the sensation of sheer satisfaction. Bless this series to bring it back. What a brutal, chilling, and if one, satisfying chapter. That chapter had an interesting backstory to Kokushibo, who was close to being killed by his brother, Yoruchi, the sun breathing user. And on a sad note, with Yoruchi's death due to his age, the nightmare today could have been prevented. But life is funny that way. That all said, Kokushibo didn't take it so lightly on his luck. The closing comment has a very good depth to his character. He acknowledged the defeat, felt humiliated by his brother's death. It's as if to say, his fate is worse than death. With the strongest pillar out, he vowed to always win until he became ugly like he is today. It's amazing where the demons gained the motivation to live, kill, and express the shell of their former self. It gives these characters reason to adapt and sometimes relate. Not exactly on the dark, cruel nature, but the desire and unfulfilled wish. The color page spread is really nice with the Sun and Moon Brothers and Tanjiro and Nezuko simply love. After that, your head will lean towards to an adrenaline rush. It's pure intensity until the very end. Always had a bad feeling when things look too good to be true. It has been a recurring theme, to the point you might as well have a character say, nothing can ruin this moment. And the opposite happens. Case in point, the finishing blow with Kokushiba corner and pillars going all in. I was hoping for a smooth sailing, but what we got is another Titanic. The counterattack is mind numbing, even when you expect it. It's the damage that will vary. Hiroshima and Sanami are blown away, harm along the way. Tokito is one that had me lost with words. My mind couldn't register on what just happened. Take a harder look, I can sadly say his body is sliced in half. Grim Reaper is ready to take that death flag. This is practically guaranteed death unless he becomes a demon or the greatest ass pull known to mankind will happen. Send a Naruto character now. Genya got her bad as well. He gets sliced in half as well, only vertically. Luckily, he's a demon, but I wonder if he's next in line to die. The series is cold as hell. A page shows the sickening multiple sores spouting out from his body. I like how it made sense since the blade is made out of his flesh. So why not bring out crap load of them? It's discouraging to read Tokito's words that can be summed up with one word. Hopeless. I get that he lost his lower half, but it's shaking my feelings. It's like watching a Saturday morning cartoon with a to be continue end screen as a kid. It can be scary, it can be sad, and you'll be dying to know the conclusion. And you had to wait one week. Fortunately, that cartoon has a hero's comeback and that translate well here. Bless Himashima and Sanami to recover and fight back without stopping. Not only it uplifts the downer spirit, but it gave Tokito confidence back. It's astonishing to watch them fight and fight and fight until they are truly dead. This is how you pull off the model, never give up. From this point forward, the chapter enters a highly intense, remarkable, final strike attempts. Whatever it takes, at its finest. It's rather disturbing to take the thought of Tokito slowly dying. His train of thought has grown slower. He barely could think his motivation to act. And that's haunting. I tend to think in shonen, characters who are younger than 17 are shielded from death, unless it's a flashback. 
Tokito is only 14 years old, to my knowledge. Dying as a kid, technically, is pretty damn sad. This series is brutal. Of course he's not dead yet, but I am preparing a casket. At least, he is going out with a bang. Although he was losing, he regains power to help Pillars with his blade turning red. I was gasping for air from excitement. This freezes Kokushiba from attacking, leaving him incredibly vulnerable. Sanami goes for his attempt to cut his neck, but it's no good. His neck is too strong. Then, Genya sneak attack with Blood Demon Art to grow roots again within Kokushibo's body. That way, those blades from his body won't do anything. The teamwork keeps getting better and better. Himashima goes for his attempt to cut his neck, but it's still no good, even with the damn ball. Keep in mind, this is the strongest pillar, at least in strength wise. With the ball drop on the back of his neck, Himashima uses the axe to attack the front. It's still no good. Even with the attempts, Kokushibo is still vulnerable. Who would have thought a sequence of decapitating a demon and literally nothing else would be this incredibly exciting? Before the grand finale, there's a really nice flashback with Yoroshi and Kokushibo before his demonic life. Kokushibo believed they were the peak. No one will match up to them, let alone surpass. Yoroshi, however, disagreed. What he believed was that they were not that great. They're solely one fragment of humankind's long, long history. It's a nice and philosophical way of saying everyone is replaceable. I know it sounds harsh, but the idea is everyone can reach the same place as them. That was what excited Yoruchi. I don't recall him smiling before, but it's a rare sight to behold. Warm and relaxed. Back to present, Sanami swings at the ball to thrust downward, kicking the excitement into high gear. It added much needed strength to cut down. If that doesn't work, then it's hopeless. The flashback was heartwarming enough, but Yoruchi's message resumed forward to the present, creating a wonderful complimentary. The inspiring message translates perfectly based on the action that will lead to grand victory. The successor can reach the same place as sun and moon pillars, and they will surpass them. Down goes Koko Shibo's head. What a very, very satisfying finishing blow. Is it over? God, I have no idea, but I hope so. Before closing the review, it's best to know how outstanding the sequence and visual are throughout the chapter. It had me floor with twists and turns. It had me interactive with each moment. Without the proper paneling and transition, the impact and the rush would be as deeply felt. I am certain the anime will bring life to the screen when the time comes. It will be heaven. Bottom line, the action was superb. What a chapter. This is the chapter that hit all the right note. The sacrifice, the payoff, the tension, and the satisfaction were all top notch. Probably the best chapter of the year. I don't know if the battle is really over, but I still deem this as one of the best fight in the series. If time travel exists, let me see the future of the anime. Unless it goes to a different studio, then we all doom. For now, let's enjoy the dramatic finish before we return to the hardship. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. Do you believe Kokushibo is dead? I mean, we didn't see the body go ashes. We don't know if the direction will be like Upper Moon 3, where you thought the battle was over and then a twist happens, or it will be like the Upper Moon 2, where the battle is over and then the battle really is over. So what about here? Which direction will it go? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.